Welcome back everyone. Happy Tuesday. Christine here from Unique Sapphire. What do you think? Pretty cool. So it is that week of my show that's coming up on Saturday and what a better time after I reflected everything to do my total reset. New branding, new logo, new look, new bases, lots of fun. So where we left off was dyeing up Northern Lights and Pima Cotton. And again, cotton is completely different than wool dyeing. So if you want to watch that, link's in the description below. But as promised in the last video, the importance of washing the cotton. And you don't want to, if you're a, a hand dyer like I am, an indie dyer, indie artist, fiber artist, whatever you call yourself, and if you're going to go into dyeing cotton, you don't want to send something to a client or customer that's going to bleed. So let's get into washing and I'll be right back. All right, I do apologize. I only got one shot to get this footage for you and I do apologize. I have a corner sink and yeah. But I brought in Northern Lights that we dyed up the other day. And I want to show you the washing, rinsing, and soaking process. And I am reusing some water from some earlier dyeing. And it does have a slight tinge to it. And first I'm going to do the initial soak to try to remove the excess dye without any soap. And as you can see, how much dye is actually coming out of just that one skein. I try to reuse as much water as I can in the dye, in my dyeing process, excuse me, because cotton dyeing does take up a lot of resources and water. And you're probably thinking that's a lot of dye coming out of there. And you're correct, it is a lot of unused dye because with any fiber, it can only accept so much. Look at all that dye. I definitely wouldn't want to send anyone something like that with all that dye left into it. And that's why the initial soak is so helpful in opening all the excess dye out of each skein. As with cotton, you don't need to be worried about trying to felt it or whatnot. It can take the abuse of being a little manhandled in the sink and swirled around and all that. All right, now's the time for hot water and some soap. And this will be the first of many. And I'm not new to dyeing cotton, so. And as you can see, the water, still pretty dark coming out of there. Oh, I pulled my plug. That happens a lot. So as you can see, I'm pretty happy with how the water is now looking. 
I'm going to add some conditioner to this. This will aid in removing any extra suds because I did put a lot of soap in there for the five skeins that I'm washing, but I did that on purpose to remove all the excess dye as much as possible so I can send a customer a happy skein of yarn that will not bleed. Yes, they do make conditioner. Unicorn Fiber makes a fiber rinse, anti-static conditioning for fabrics and knitwear. Pretty cool stuff. So I have it in here. You can see my hands. The water is clear. Like I said, if somebody goes home and knits something up with this and then puts it in hot water, sometimes the colors may bleed a little bit. That's why I tell people that I do my best to get all the dye out of the cotton. And of course, Unicorn Fiber, not sponsored. It's just something I use. I also like their wool scouring stuff as well. There's a lot of other ones that I like out there too and some uh, locals that make some. So that's pretty awesome as well if you're sticking to buying local. All right, so now this goes onto the drying rack and it's done. Ready to be skeined up then and go to the show. And we're back. So even if you're dyeing it for yourself, be prepared. It's going to take a lot of resources. I'm very on the edge or on the verge of buying a rain barrel to catch rainwater for when I dye stuff like this because well it sucks up all the dye or most of the dye so you can automatically if you're dyeing like colors automatically reuse that water so rainwater is a I live in western PA it's been raining a lot here and I could have saved a lot of money in my water bill if I would have had a rain collection bucket and then just use that water. So that is something that I'm really, really thinking about doing because I'm also into renewable sources and being kind and friendly to the environment. That goes to show that the dyes that are going down the drain have to meet strict requirements. So please don't try to do it with Kool-Aid. It's not gonna work. It's only gonna stain it buy professional dyes. They're made and meant for the standards that is not gonna harm the waterways, okay? So I hope you got some knowledge out of this, learned something new. You wanna try the colorway? It's three colors. Go for it. Have fun with it. Create. As always, I'll see you in the next one. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell to be notified for when I post a new video. I'll see you soon. Bye. Look, my experiment. Semi-speckled Pima cotton. I'm working on it. Take two of Christine being a dumbass.